I'm going back to Hattie's Haunted Hotel. I am writing a picture book. Oh, it's so hard. <sighs> writing is not my strong suit. About a ghost called Hattie who runs a hotel. I think this book is so useful for writing picture books. Hi everyone, welcome to another video. So this is going to be continuing my series on working on my picture book, Hattie's Haunted Hotel. Now the first video that I did was over a year ago because this is a project that I started and then I was doing other things but we are coming back to it and today's video I'm working on my manuscript. So I'm actually rewriting my manuscript and I haven't looked at this in over a year so first of all here i've got my writing i've got a couple of different drafts so i'm going to read through those make notes i've also got a craft book so this is a craft book on how to write picture books so i'll let you know if there's any like good tips in this that i think might help you if you're also writing a picture book and i might read you a couple of lines of what i've got so far and maybe some things that I need to work on as well. And then I think maybe tomorrow I might have a look through some of my favorite picture books, um, have a look at the writing and see what I like. Yeah, see if I can get any tips from that as well. But yeah, hope you enjoy this vlog. It's kind of, yeah, kind of a writing vlog. Okay, so I'm gonna, first of all, start off by rereading my manuscript. like the start to that so I think that bit I might keep the same. Welcome to Hattie's Haunted Hotel, the most relaxing retreat for ghosts and ghouls. This is my third draft. Oh maybe I should tell you a bit about the book. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you know so Hattie's Haunted Hotel is a picture book about a ghost called Hattie who runs a hotel and she's very hard working also quite an anxious person or quite an anxious ghost and she just wants everyone to have the best day and she worries that things are going to go wrong so that is the premise of my picture book and um, i quite like this next bit actually hattie loves her job she's a ghost herself so knows it's quite tiring sometimes yeah so this is my third draft and then my fourth draft suddenly became a lot shorter. I think I decided that I was kind of explaining a lot of things to the reader and there were a few things in it that I just felt a bit kind of cringy. <laughs> so then my fourth draft, I just kind of cut a load of that out. This was the version that I handed in to my picture book course that I was doing. I think September, October, 2021 was actually when I was working on this. The same structure of the story, but I just cut out a lot of the things because there was a there was a really cringy line in here where I said, um, mistakes sometimes happen, but it's not usually as bad as you imagine. <laughs> I think kids are pretty smart and I'd rather the they understand it themselves or or like I kind of don't want to make it like too preachy. So the feedback, they said that the story structure needs a bit more work and it reads more like a series of statements, um, which I can totally see. And I think one of the things that I really need to work on is the show don't tell, which they have got a section in this book about. So they give an example in the book that says, our dog was happy to see me is a telling statement. Basically, you don't want to tell the reader what is happening. You want to 
imply it by sort of different actions. At least that is my understanding of show don't tell. Whereas our dog yipped and yapped and le leapt up. That doesn't say specifically our dog was happy to see us. But you can kind of tell like if the dog's tail is like wagging backwards and forwards and he's like jumping up like it shows that he's excited so that is something that i have to work on but yeah so i'm gonna get stuck into this book and yeah i'll let you know what tips i come across and i'm gonna be writing down loads and loads of notes on how i can improve my story I don't know. Hurrah! Hurrah! You can't tell that there's books in this bag. I don't know why I'm holding it's it up. It's an empty bag. It's not. It's really heavy. Come feel this. If it was really heavy, you could have empty it. Well, it's pretty heavy. I joined the library and had a nice chat with the ladies and I said, how many books is the maximum? They said 12. So I got 12 picture books. Um, and I told them that I'm writing. There's Tom! Hi Tom! I want to squish your head. How do I do it? You can't tell from your assistance, but I'm scowling. <laughs> no, you're too fuzzy. I can't tell. Squish. Do you want to see the picture books I got? Are you talking to me? Yes, and also the viewers. Do you want to see? So this one's by Julia Donaldson. Got two Julia Donaldson. This one reminded me of Elmer with this pattern. I got a David Walliams one. Don't worry, little crab. I don't know this author, but I thought the line was cute. I love how sassy the cats are. You can tell these are all library books because they've all got this shiny protective cover. I just picked this one up because I liked the title. Last but not least, an Anthony Brown one. And I love Anthony Brown. He's like my one of my favorite illustrators and writers from when I was a kid. So, yes, yeah, so I have a whole load of pitch books I'm gonna look through. I've also got some in my own collection, so I'm gonna look through those as well. And I'm gonna try and focus mainly on the writing for this bit and see what bits of the story I think are really good. To show you our lovely little plant corner and our mirror you might remember this mirror we took it from our old house it literally fits so perfect and also this little table which this was a find from TK Maxx this bit actually folds out if we want it to as well but that fits so perfectly in this corner also over here Tom has been putting our shelves up so we have loads and loads of games yay so I am really enjoying this book and I've been making lots of notes and yeah I think this book is so useful for writing picture books I haven't completely 
read through the whole thing. I think I'm about halfway through. It kind of wants to open there, doesn't it? But yeah, it's got loads of tips in this book. It's got tips on writing characters, making them likeable and memorable, and tips on like the structure and different ways you can like rewrite your story, like changing the tense and different things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try out a couple of the exercises see what I can change to my own manuscript. Also test them out on the picture books and see if they've got strong characters and good openings as well. So yeah, that is the plan. Let me consult my notes. I made so many notes. So the writer of this book, Anne Whitford Paul, she suggests writing your first draft pretty early in this book. She says you're gonna be writing several drafts. So that is something that is really useful to know. And then she starts talking about your story question. So there must be a question that sort of comes to the reader as they're reading the story. And the question will be sort of around like the problem in the story that your main character faces. She gave a couple of examples of some like famous picture books with some questions. So in Where the Wild Things Are, the question is, how does a child control his anger? And then the answer is, a child controls his anger by mentally traveling to a safe place where he safely expresses his emotions and returns home calm with supper waiting. Yeah, there should just be one question and one answer. So you're not going off on like loads of different tangents. Right, so I need to come up with my story question. So the question is basically what your story is about. So my story is about Hattie, who is a perfectionistic ghost who worries a lot. <laughs> I've actually come up with two different questions. So I could either have, can Hattie relax on her day off? Or can Hattie stop worrying about things going wrong? Um, I don't know if this means that my story is too unfocused. Uh, Tom, shall I just ask you the question? Okay, Tom, I have to come up with a story question. I'm only allowed one. So should I have? Give me a story question. So the story question, it's um, it's kind of to do with like the character's problem in the story, and it's kind of like and the main bit. Get... So it's like it's the thing that makes the story interesting. Are you talking like about you don't have a Hattie's haunted hotel? I'm talking about Hattie's haunted okay. hotel. It's what drives the story. Like it's what drives the story is. Patty wants to be good at her job and help make the hotel as good as it can be. Yeah. Is oh, it? so Tom's come up with a different question. Hattie wants to be good at her job. She wants her hotel to be successful, right? Yeah. And obviously the way to do that is customer satisfaction. <laughs> I mean, I need to work on my manuscript because I don't think I showed her being anxious enough in the story. But yeah, in the book it suggests asking a few different people to come up with a story question for you. And if they're very dissimilar from each other, then it might show that you're not sort of focused on your plot. But yeah, so I think I need to focus my plot a bit more to have... <laughs> <laughs> not that kind of plotting, Tom. <laughs> so this activity was really useful to help me kind of focus those ideas. And I've decided that Hattie is going to be opening her hotel for the first time. I'm not going to do anything about her day off. I'm just going to do it about Hattie launching her hotel and about how it's something that she's really excited for. She's been wanting to run her own hotel for ages, but she's worried about things going wrong. But yeah, so if I do change the fact that Hattie's Haunted Hotel is just opening today, then I can't use the line, the most relaxing retreat for ghosts and ghouls, which I really did like. Unless I say, 
or it will be <laughs> today's the first day i'm not sure if that will work but yes speaking of opening lines there is a section in the book that talks about strong openings and it says that a strong opening needs six w's so who is your main character and they should appear first in the text yeah it says if if a different character appears first in the text then that's just gonna confuse the reader and the listener then what does your character want so that's like the problem the goal sort of conflict when is your story taking place like if it's sort of set in the past um you can use kind of like old-fashioned phrasing or different like objects to kind of show when it's set where it's taking place as well yeah you don't have to have a really long description particularly because as well picture books the writing and the illustration should work together but they shouldn't be doing the same job so obviously the illustrations are going to show where the setting is what is the story's tone is it funny serious sad and then it talks about the wow moment that hooks the reader i'm gonna have a look at my original opening welcome to hattie's haunted hotel the most relaxing retreat for ghosts and ghouls so famous that even the living are curious to see what's inside and then it says Hattie loves her job she's a ghost herself so she knows it's quite tiring sometimes I get a point because my main character is mentioned straight away you don't know the problem yet the problem kind of comes a bit later so maybe I could work on working my problem in a bit sooner maybe I could have some like dialogue in there somewhere that talks about how worried she is where when is your story taking place yeah i don't have anything that says when it's taking place but we have got the where because we've got the haunted hotel i've got two out of four so far <laughs> what is your story's tone i would say i don't know i th i think there's a bit of humor in there also a bit of whimsy um a bit unusual because they're ghosts and then the wow moment so i would say it has the wow factor <laughs> i mean i don't want to big myself up too much um but there is that sort of like curiosity yeah it was saying that you kind of create the wow factor by having something a bit unusual or mysterious and the reader just kind of wants to know more and wants to know what's going to happen so yeah i would give myself four out of six <laughs> i don't know if that's been too generous i mean i'm not judging necessarily if i've done a good job of actually writing it but i feel like looking at the sort of structure of my opening i think i have i'm ticking i'm ticking a few boxes but yeah definitely have got a lot more to improve on i'm gonna see if i can rewrite this opening <laughs> oh it's so hard <sighs> writing is not my strong suit but we're learning it doesn't have to be right straight away let's remember that right i'm gonna try and rewrite this opening paragraph i, I need to rewrite it to make it the opening day so i could say welcome to the grand opening of hattie's haunted hotel then that would work these illustrations are so nice <laughs> oh Sweet. <laughs> oh, this is about some kids who find a dragon in a den. I'm getting distracted, but how adorable is that? They're saying sorry because <laughs> they're waking the dragon up. Oh, he looks grumpy, doesn't he? He's lovely. Right. Okay, the battery is flashing at me. I'm going to work on this for a while. 
and have a look at some picture books and come back in a minute. Oh, end papers. Love end papers. Right, essential. I have got myself a cup of tea. Let's have a look at International Cat of Mystery William Heads to Hollywood. William, International Cat of Mystery, was bored. Recently, all his cases had been getting silly and rather too easy to solve. Just the other week, he had to find a man's missing hat. It turned out to be on the man's head. <laughs> So obviously the tone of this is funny. They mention William, International Cat of Mystery, straight away. And yeah, I'd say it has the wow factor because he's a cat detective, so that's, that's kind of fun. Lionel and the Lion's Share. Lionel was a lion who did not like to share. They've done the problem straight away because they've said he doesn't like to share. I do love the illustrations in this. Look at the sad elephant. So lovely. This book, Wolfman, I got from the library and I don't actually particularly like this book. But yeah, one of the tips in the craft book it said was to find books that you love and also find books that you don't love and like analyze them and see what works and what doesn't work. I don't really feel much connection to the character. Yeah, there's there's no dialogue or like we're not inside the head of the Wolfman. We're following the Wolfman and we're not sort of getting any like empathy from the from the main character. This one on the other hand, this one is King of the Swamp. I thought this was really sweet. This is taken, you know, I guess what you could consider kind of like a monster character, but they've given him loads of personality. We get inside his head. McDarkly lived quietly all on his own and dreamed of transforming his muddy swamp home. So it tells you what the character wants straight away. There's a bit in here where the king comes along and he wants to turn it into a roller skate park. McDarkly is worried because his lovely swamp is gonna be taken over. That one I really like because you can relate to the characters more. It's just got like more of a, an emotional connection to it. So this book has got some different tips on creating your picture book character. Names are really important in picture books. And there's a quote here that says, that says names should be word pictures of the character. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to completely describe your character with the name, um, but it can kind of like add something to it. Yeah, so when I was coming up with names for Hattie, I was looking at lots of different old fashions female names. So I'd written down a whole list of different like old fashioned names. I was also thinking about Edith or Nora. Yeah, and then I wrote down Harriet and then Hattie. So Harriet or Hattie means ruler of the house. So I quite liked that because house, hotel, um, I just thought it kind of fitted. And also I liked the alliteration with Hattie's hotel. And then I was talking to somebody and I think then through talking it then became Hattie's haunted hotel. So yeah, I liked the alliteration there. But yeah, the other really important thing when thinking about your character is what does the main character want? and they also need to be a problem solver. So this is something that I really need to work on with Hattie. But yeah, so there's gonna be something that goes wrong. I was thinking maybe a red sock goes in with the laundry and turns everything pink. I was gonna resolve this story by just having all the guests be okay with it. But then I realized that that isn't Hattie solving the problem. So I'm gonna brainstorm some different ways that I can have Hattie solve the problem in the story. I've decided that she can invite everybody to a party, like a pink themed party where everything is pink. So it's gonna be a tickled pink party. So along with like all the tablecloths that have been dyed pink, 
there'll be candy floss and marshmallows and strawberries and pink lemonade and flamingos and pigs maybe that pink battenberg cake and pink hats and balloons and pink sunglasses and roller skates and a pink bouncy castle and yeah then all the guests really enjoy the party and i've also i've come up with some other names i've come up with a yellow no what was it a mellow yellow disco a feeling blue rendezvous and an emerald green gathering i just i had a look i was looking through a thesaurus and i was just coming up with like different names for parties so like festivity bash shin, shin, shindig <laughs> shindig uh what was the other one extravaganza that's a good word but yeah, I, uh, I think I might actually leave this video here. I obviously have a lot more to do with the writing. Yeah, I think I might write several drafts throughout the whole process. I might write a bit, draw a bit, go back, write a bit more. But I feel like I've come up with a lot of good ideas around like the plot and making sure now that Hattie is the problem solver but yeah there's probably going to be several more changes but yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and found some of the takeaways helpful let me know in the comments if you're also working on your own picture book and yeah I'm sending you lots of love I hope I hope you've had a wonderful day a wonderful week and I will see you in my next video bye Hi everyone, welcome to another video. <laughs> I was gonna say studio vlog, I don't know if this is a studio vlog. Um, why is it, it's always hard to start these videos. The most relaxing retreat for ghost and, ghosts and ghouls. Shall I say that again? Do I need more, any more angles of reading? <laughs> how, many, how many angles of reading do we need, Tom? Is this exciting content? Tom, you're rustling in my video. You're rustling. Uh oh. <laughs> Caught. <laughs>